<clears throat> well, I guess the question is going strong. But the question you like this? Yeah, so I guess the question uh, refers to the Iranian nuclear project trying to reach nuclear weapons. <clears throat> so you might say that it's, it's very far away. Uh, the Iranians uh, are a threat to the global community, they are a threat to the safety and to the stability of the Middle East. It's not just about, of course, Israel, although they say that they want to wipe Israel off the map. Clearly, they are, <coughs> they are a threat also for the our countries of the Gulf and, of course, to the, to the West in general, because, as they say, they, they view the U.S. as the big Satan, and Israel is just the little, little Satan. So, <laughs> definitely, if Iran will get will get into weapons, that's that's bad news. However, <coughs> it does have an influence. I would assume that if Iran will reach nuclear weapons will become more powerful, it will have more influence. Right now, Iran supports those elements in the Palestinian society which are the harshest uh, objectors to the peace process. Namely, uh, Hamas terrorists, Hamas terror organization. is backed by Iran, is supported by Iran. Uh, they received instructions from the Hezbollah terrorist organization in Lebanon, which is also supported by Iran. So, if Iran gets into weapons, that is like a, a insurance policy for the Iranian regime. That means that this regime will continue to support and will be even more efficient in supporting Palestinian extremists, which will make reaching peace uh, more difficult. <coughs> Again, like I said, because getting, pe <coughs> getting to peace requires compromises, and those people are not ready for any compromise. And the position of Hamas is that Israel should be destroyed flat out. That's why, that's another reason why in Israel we view the Iranian nuclear project with uh, great concern. I'm not sure if uh, many of you in this room know that actually Israel has a nuclear program. It's something that's been kept pretty hush-hush and pretty secret. It's called the Dimon Nuclear Facility. There's a scientist, his last name is Vanunu, who at one point, he worked there and he uh, at one point disclosed what was going on with this nuclear facility and spent many years in prison because of it. He's currently under house arrest. There are lots of activists in Israel trying to grant, trying to bring justice to him. Um, I think one reason why Israel is so completely uh, hot on trying to get the United States to attack Iran, it's because the balance of power would shift. And, you know, the, the best scenario for everybody on this planet would be a nuclear-free world and a nuclear-free Middle East. But the fact is that Israel has a nuclear program. Um, I believe that if there was another deterrent in the Middle East, Israel may have to think twice about all the different international laws that they violate. And on the next fourth question, uh, we'll reverse the order. And just, just for the sake of, sake of going through as many questions as we can. Uh, Okay, this is a question for Ms. Strumsky. Uh, in response to the limited activity and movement of Palestinians in Israel, uh, what is it like for Jews to live in Arab countries? How is it for them in Syria? Do the Jews live in freedom? Can they travel from city to city and across borders without penalty? I have to tell you, I don't know the particulars about that situation, but I can tell you that Jews have long sought refuge in Muslim lands. Um, I know that, for instance, during this, as I mentioned, the Spanish Inquisition, uh, when the Jews were being just massacred by the Inquisitors, they fled to Palestine. And you still have those descendants of those Jews living there now called the Sephardic Jews. Um, 